Hi, uh, today I'm going to be doing another review for CrowdTap. This time it'll be another one for Sweet and Low, but slightly different than the eggnog video. Um, I'm sorry if you hear any music. I think the apartment above us gives uh, music lessons during the day. Um, not really too big of a pain in the butt for me, but you might hear some music. Uh, so anyway, uh, there were two Sweet and Low missions that I signed up for, and I got accepted to both of them. And the previous one was my eggnog video and then this one is very similar but you get a couple of different choices so in the package um, you get your, you know the typical instruction sheet it says you know different op different things for you to do basically I have to take a bunch of pictures and post them and of course I always do a video so I find that a little more interesting so when you get uh, this time you get four different recipes and they say just you know you can just make one of them fortunately uh, because I only have the ingredients for one of them. Uh, so, yeah. So, the one I'm going to be doing is the Enlightened Vanilla Chai Latte. And I will, um, I don't know if I'll post it in the description box. I, I think I forgot to do that last time with the eggnog, but this is the recipe. So, if you want to pause it and take a look at it. The only thing I do not have is ground cardamom, but you can substitute uh, half and half cinnamon and nutmeg, which I do have, and so that's what I will do. That should go fine in a lot of vanilla chai latte. Uh, the other ones are uh, spicy, so nicey chocolate coffee. I'll show you that recipe as well. I'm not doing any of these. I don't have all the ingredients. Ooh. There we go. Again, you know, pause it if you want it. There's the lighter pumpkin latte, which sounds really good. I just don't have canned pumpkin on hand right now. Um, I, I really want to try not to have to buy anything really necessarily for these recipes um, because I'm not getting paid to do this. I basically get the get you know free stuff for it, but you know, I don't I don't want to, have to go out and get pumpkin and whatnot for it, so. That's why I didn't do this one, but I, I really like the recipe. I, I really wish I could get a chance to try it. Okay, there's that recipe. Also, the one I'm trying, the um, Enlightened Chai Latte, I think is the, yeah, it's the least caloric. It's only 40 calories per serving, which is awesome. And then the last one is a Thin Minty Mochaccino. And honestly, I don't like chocolate and mint together a lot of the time. Usually because they do dark chocolate. I'm okay with milk chocolate and some mint. Um, I think a while ago, Hershey's, you did, they had these little sticks. They, they were sticks. They were like, you know, almost look like a, like a stick of a Kit Kat bar. But they did sticks and they had a, a milk chocolate minty one, which was really, really good. But they stopped making them years ago. But anyway, this is a thin minty mochaccino. If you're interested at all in that recipe. These all require sweet and low, but I am sure you could replace it with sugar. It would just be more calorie heavy. And of course, you know, the whole point right now is that we're supposed to use sweet and low. So, besides the recipes, I also got another crap ton of sweet and low packets. Each of these packets has two things of sweet and low in it. And I got, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18. I got 18 packets. So I got 36 packages of sweet and low. And I've still got a bunch left over from my eggnog one. So we'll see. I think I actually got more in this one than I did in the previous one. And I think they want to try to give you enough so you could try a couple of the recipes if you want. So I think I don't think there's quite enough for you. No, there's not there's not enough in here for you to try all of the recipes, but I think they wanted to give you enough so you could try some more and also so you can give them to friends. And like last time I got a canvas bag, but the design is different. Last time I think it was some birds, and this time it's an octopus. It's sweet and low. I think this is like the best sweet and low is definitely given the best swag out of all of these. I mean, this is something legitimate. Like it's a legitimately nice canvas bag. It's not like a super expensive one, but it's really nice. So I really, really enjoyed that. So now I will make the 
enlightened vanilla chai latte and I will show you my process and what I think about it. So these are the ingredients for the enlightened vanilla chai latte. We have uh, four cups of water which will be boiling when we use it. Uh, two cups of milk which needs to be heated. We have a heat resistant four cup pitcher, some black tea, uh, this is some vanilla extract, pumpkin pie spice, 12 packets of sweet and low, and then since I don't have cardamom, what you can do is do half and half of cinnamon and nutmeg, which I've already pre-mixed together. And then the last thing you need is a pinch of freshly ground pepper, and this is our pepper mill. So let's get started. The tea I'm using is this Golden Imperial Lotus Black Tea Rosette from Tea Vana. Um, I have a lot of tea, a lot of loose leaf tea, but for some reason I don't have a lot of plain black tea. But fortunately I still have this, some of this. And one rosette is good for two cups, so we're just going to grab two rosettes. They look really weird, I'm sorry, but they, they do taste really good. They look like this. They're basically a blooming tea, which means that um, people have handcrafted these together and they make interesting shapes when you put them in a container. Right now um, I'm starting to boil my water and microwaving my milk. So I put two of these in here and there's already four cups of water in there. So once that's boiling, we'll put that over the tea. Now, if you're planning on doing this with another kind of tea, you've got to be careful because if you do it with any white tea or green tea, it's going to be very bitter because you need boiling water for this recipe. And black teas are really the only kind that, black teas and herbal teas are really the only kind that's strong enough to withstand the boiling water. The other ones can get scalded and they taste really weird. I learned this after lots of trial and error and watching a whole bunch of videos on the subject. So now we're just going to wait until everything is ready. Once it's all ready, we're going to pour everything into this pot, since I don't have another vessel that is good for pouring, and we shall make the drink. Water has been boiled. We're going to fill up this thing to the top. This is a four cup tea. Ooh, that is very hot. Use the sleeve of protection. Pour this. It's all the way to the top. Now there's just about four cups of water in this thing. Yep. Here we go. Close it. And now we shall set the timer. You cannot see this, I'm sorry. For three minutes. And while that is brewing, I am going to run the microwave again with the milk, and then we shall be good to go. Mostly we'll just have to combine the ingredients. The tea has finished brewing, and I've finished microwaving the milk. It's hot. It's not boiling, but it is hot. I also changed my mind and grabbed a bigger pot. I thought that it might not be quite big enough for this. So the way this works is it has to be set on the side of something. Usually you set it on top of a mug. And it drinks. One thing, if you ever do get these, you can either get them from Tivana or even they have them at Think Geek. Uh, just be careful um, that the thing on the bottom is not pressed by anything. I have had tea spill everywhere on my counter before because it accidentally got pressed. Yeah, so you're just going to drain the tea. Uh, the actual recipe calls for four tea bags, and you can just steep it in the pot itself and just remove the tea bags and squeeze them out. Um, since I have loose leaf tea, I'm doing it this way. So either way, typically with the recipes, you can kind of fudge it. Baking, you don't want to fudge it, but for cooking, not so bad. Okay, tea is done. Those look very strange, but I promise it is to drink. So now, looking at our recipe, stir in basically all the ingredients. I'm going to stir in the milk first because, well, it's here. Put the milk. And 
and we need all of the Sweden though, which should be interesting. Uh, I will cut for a minute while I open these up because it's hard to do with one hand. Added the sweet and low. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Usually for one teaspoon I use a full capful, so I'm just going to use half a capful. This is uh, full strength pure vanilla extract. It just seems to work better than the imitation vanilla. It is pricier, but I do think that it works better. So now I'm going to do half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. and half a teaspoon of cardamom or of the nutmeg cinnamon substitute. And then we need just a little smidge of ground pepper, which is a little difficult to do with one hand. Let's see, I can do this. Yeah, that's a pinch. All right, so then we need to grab a spoon. I have a spoon somewhere. I know I do. Spoon. And we shall stir this. It smells really good. Now let's make six servings and <laughs> I don't have, like, it's just me here. My husband's at work, so. I shall either have a whole ton of it or do something with it, I'm sure. I'm sure I can save it and uh, drink it later. All right, well, then I will stir it and I will give it a taste and let you guys know how it turned out. Hi, I finished making the Enlightened Vanilla Chai Latte. And I'm going to give it a try. Mmm, that's really good. At the end when you serve it, you have to make sure you put a little bit more pumpkin pie spice on top. Mmm. It's actually a little... See, it's a little sweeter than normal chai lattes. And it's also not as spicy. Because you used regular tea. I think I this used, I could have used, I actually do have a chai tea mix, and I considered using it, but I wanted to do it as the recipe said, and I think it would have tasted maybe a little bit more like an actual chai latte had I used the chai mix, so it was a little spicier, but then again, I think chai is mostly tea and milk, but I could be wrong. Um. I guess chai means tea, but chai latte is tea and milk, probably. Um, but tastes good. I mean, it's certainly something I drink. And considering it's only 40 calories per serving. Now, this is an 8-ounce serving, I think, 8 or 10 ounces. So maybe um, this is probably a bit more. This is maybe 60 or 80 calories what I've got here. But, I mean, a normal chai latte, especially if you just get a tall from Starbucks, that's... Over 200 calories, two or 300 calories, I think, for just the little, the little one. So, sweet and low definitely saves calories, and it tastes really good. It tastes different than normal chai latte, but it's not bad. Um, I would certainly, I mean, I would make it again, I guess. It's just, I wish there were recipes for just the individual ones, and I'm sure you could probably cut this down to a single cup, where you just brew a cup of tea and you get half a cup of hot milk and just add a pinch of all the different spices and a little bit of sweet and low and it probably worked just fine you know refine the recipe because so i don't know what i'm going to do with my other with like the rest of the pot of this um so that'll be interesting i don't know i'm going to enjoy finishing drinking this so i'd say yeah if you get a chance to try this recipe definitely Check it out if it'll focus. Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. So yeah, check this recipe out. It's really good. Um, already said, if you're used to the spicier chai lattes, I would suggest if you actually have a chai latte or a, a chai 
mix that has a lot more spices, uh, try using that. It might give you um, a spicier result. This is a good, um, this is a good drink. And whether it's a chai latte, I don't know, but I, but I do like it. All right. Well, I hope you found this helpful, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.